मोस्ट रिवियर्ड स्वामी प्रभानंद जी महाराज स्वामी भजनानंद जी महाराज मोस्ट रिवियर्ड स्वामी गौतमानंद जी महाराज रिवियर्ड सर्वलोकानंद जी महाराज अदार रिवियर्ड एंड डियर मंगस एंड ब्रह्मचारिन्स इन दडियन्स रेसपेक्टेड नन्स and the representatives of member ashrams of the bhava prachar parishads the topic of the discussion i know shami vivekananda in the light of 150 years actually more than 150 years have passed since he was born and i prefer to count from 1893 the year he participated in the world's parliament of religions in chicago because from that time only he became known to the people at large so during the 120 years a little more than 20 years shami ji has influenced and inspired innumerable lives in india and abroad let us take the case of netaji subhash here he was then a boy of only 15 came across a book most probably it was a copy of shami ji's indian lectures lectures from kolombo to almora he read a few pages and then and there itself he decided what will be the future course of his life another incidents another example a western lady she is weeping after listening to shami ji's speech when she was asked the reason she said he has given me eternal life so far he used to she used to think in the usual way that she was a puny creature limited to birth and death after listening to shami ji she realized that she was the divine self immortal and infinite no discovery about your identity can be more glorious than this in fact this was the mission of shami vivekananda he once wrote to nivedita in a letter in other languages this was his mission to provide a divine identity to everybody to provide a divine meaning to every activity of life now how did shami vivekananda appear to those who came in his close contact sister christine one of his western disciples says about shami vivekananda he was love personified he was all love and miss macleod another disciple western disciple she says he was all strength actually shami ji was both and he instills in his followers both love and strength while de- describing what should be the characteristic of an ideal monk shami ji says a monk will be as strong as strength itself still he will have a woman's heart so love and strength if you are to uh, follow shami ji you have to claim that we had right kind of followers of shami ji we must have at least these two qualities love for god love for man and strength mental spiritual and in addition to that physical strength also we all know that his message was not only for india but also for the world at large in her introductory speech in her introductory uh, in in her introduction to shami ji's complete words sister nivedita describes shami ji's message as words heal all 
meaning that his message contains cure for all maladies of mankind words heal all his participation at chicago parliament of religions was a turning point in our national history sri aurobind says that this was the first visible sign that india is awake and she was awake not only to survive but also to conquer and we all know this is now an established fact that from this followed india's struggle for independence and which was greatly influenced by shami ji's deeds and words leaders like netaji subhash mahatma gandhi and sri aurobindo and also the rank and file of this freedom movement were very much influenced by shami vivekananda so much so that lord ronald say whenever he would come across a young man who has been who was arrested he would ask this first question which was the stock question he would ask are you a vedantin are you a follower of vivekananda if he was the answer was in the affirmative uh, the surveillance will be more uh, that particular young man will be suspected more a very interesting statement we find in a book by an historian which was published uh, from national education council no, from the education council of west bengal a few years after the independence you will find this uh, statement quoted in river shami prabhanand ji's article uh, in the bengali anth- anthology chintanay vivekananda he says the how pervasive was his influence in pre independence india uh, that he in a very interesting statement he explains he says atin boshu he says vivekananda did not die in 1902 he lived at least till 1947 with gandhi and bosh closes the epoch which he had started a new chapter has begun only the future will show whether his soul will die now or it will reincarnate to spiritualize the nation surely his soul has not gone to rest it seems more active now especially after the tremendous uh, enthusiasm we have observed during the last 4 years over the 150th birth anniversary of shami vivekananda it is quite evident that is the point to the fact that shami vivekananda is still alive he is still active more active also if we consider the main policies of all the governments that ruled in india since independence we find that they have centered around more or less this main issues issues of poverty of common people their education and nutrition women empowerment and the like women empowerment and the like these are the issues we know which shami ji repeatedly mentioned and discussed in his indian lectures that he delivered immediately on his triumphant return from the west so we can say that shami ji is still relevant and he is emerging more relevant every day among our national leaders it was shami ji alone who placed a national goal before the country what was that goal to establish an ideal society first in india and then to set that model before the world also shami ji says that truth does not pay homage to any society society has to pay homage to truth that society is the greatest where the highest truths are made practical this society where the highest truth by highest truth when shami ji says it it cannot but be the spiritual truth a kind of society we have not yet found such society never in the history an ideal society ever was a reality and this is first time it it would be go- going to take place following sri ramakrishna sharada devi and vivekananda no, uh, we should not think uh, from nivedita we know the shami ji was not for the repetition of our glorious future he was for a future for this country 
that would first outshine our glorious past, the past that produced Upanishads, the past that produced the epics like Ramayana and Mahabharata, the past, the very glorious past that produced Rajarshis like Janakos, even that glorious past will seem insignificant uh, when that real India will be a reality. Nivedita said the India of Shamiji's dream lay in the future. So that is the national goal, a goal uh, he has placed before uh, our country as a nation as a whole. Why uh, not yet, never this ideal society uh, uh, had been established yet because we have never considered religion as a positive factor in society. Religion in its own way has influenced society, but never have we considered to use religion for the sake of building a society. There is much, there is surely much point in its favor why religion was not used, because religion uh, in its previous forms it was religion was never uh, an equal blessing to all it was blessing to a particular community whereas it were a, it was a horrible curse for the others so only after the advent of sri ramakrishna we have seen a benign face of religion which is benign for everybody in all circumstances. Shamiji's mantra for an ideal society was this, Western science coupled with Vedanta. If Shamiji was to utter this uh, now, I think he would not use the word Western because science is no longer the monopoly of the West only. He would have used science coupled with Vedanta. Science to take care of external world, and religion to take care of the inner world. We would have both the wealth of the external world and the wealth of the heart. Combining both, an ideal society will be first formed in India, then the whole world will follow us. Swamiji said that the future society would be neither Western nor Eastern. It would be a common human society. When this will be accomplished, an ideal society world over with spirituality in its due role. When this will be possible, we will be able to say, we will be in a position to say that Ramakrishna movement has reached its fulfillment. But this is not possible without this third order of Ramakrishna movement, which our dear Vice President Maharaj uh, said. He gave this name to this member ashram of the Bhapaprajar Parishad. We must work out it together. We have the same motto, same goal, same ideal. Whenever Shamiji would encourage anybody, he would say that we have done a wonderful job, but we have to do still better. Our sentiments about this member astronomers of the Bhavad Prachar Purishwad also is the same. We have been doing commendable work throughout the countries, but we expect much more than that. We want to see great Karma Yogins among you who would be running as efficiently uh, like us, the Ramakrishna, even more. The hospitals like Shiva Pratishtans, educational institutions like Narendrapur or Coimbatore, we want that. Along with that, we want also spiritual giants like Dangmashai um, uh, appearing among you who will be uh, remain in society as living inspirations to many others. Swamiji used to say that by following Thakur, the householders, the Bhava Prachar Parishad Ashramas are not uh, uh, mostly, ho mostly householders, but there are nuns and uh, monks also, but mostly they are householders. That is why I uh, say, uh, use these words. That uh, Swamiji says that by following Thakur and the Holy Trio, the householders' life will be so elevated that a time will come when the human babies will be born with yogic qualities itself. So, we can imagine what a great expectation Shamiji had of these private astronomers. We can only, we pray and sincerely hope that you would 
मेक स्वामीजी हैप्पी यू नॉट फेल हिम थैंक यू